Hi everyone, this is Ryan, otherwise known as Aryan. I'm bringing you a game that I thought was kind of interesting. So to begin with here are the bands. This was a tough call for me because Utsuru does the Dark Pulse, which really disrupts your hand, and Obero playing around the final pedal is really tricky, and I had to, I'd have to deal with potentially the bear, which is disruptive since I'm also running Obero, and that really gets into my attack ranges. But ultimately I decide to go with Koruno, because the lair denial and my own potential lack of reactions, I was assuming that he was going to be banning Obero on my part, just because uh, usually uh, the players on the Discord are pretty consistent about finding my weakest matchup. So, I ban Karuno and he bans my Karuru. Uh, first thing is I was honestly not entirely sure how I wanted to build this deck, but one of the conceits I was going with is using Revitalize to replay Black Box Neo as much as possible. After that, I go with Steel Strings and Caltraps just because they consistently attack the range of 2 through 4, as long as they're in my discard pile on the reshuffle. It makes it so there's not exactly a safe zone in that area for my opponent, just to maintain the pressure there. Turbo Switch to be my enabler for Black Box Neo. Uh, you need to get down to 3 machine tokens to resurge it, and then you take Quick Change, clearly, because it uh, helps you get back to 4 and then 5 with the Neo, which lets you transform. So those are kind of a given. I decided to go Omnis, Omnis Blaster because I want to transform rapidly, and, and honestly Omnis Blaster is one of the uh, cards I'm trying to test this format. At first I go with the Shadow Clone, just because it uh, being able to play two two twos that are no reactions is very strong. Ultimately, I decide not to take Shadow Clone, though, because I want to have that lingering threat from the discard pile, and once you play your Steel Strings or your Caltraps, you give that range to your opponent as kind of a safe spot to be in, and uh, no longer threatening Rush of Blades as strongly. Briefly consider the uh, Steam Cannon, but the problem with Steam Cannon is that it would throw off my Artificial Sakura game. I, I wouldn't be able to uh, consistently get down to where I want to be and get back up, which means it would slow my transformations down, and that's just not something that I want. I do want to have another reaction, though, just because playing it throughout is tricky in the first place, and I kind of feel like you need the support of the reactions to, to be safe there, and there's plenty of uh, cards between Utsuru and Obero that can be avoided through having the forward movement. And finally, I take the Uro special because it, uh, I just have a lot of traps, and I figured if I somehow got donked for a lot of life, I could use that to begin making a comeback through a series of trap plays on each reshuffle. Gagnito Mulliganing 2. I decided to keep this hand since I've got all three traps, they're all fine to discard, and I also have the Revitalize, which I want to play early, if possible. This is a pretty standard opener from Gagnito, where he plays the uh, Sacred Sakura branch and gains the final pedal. It's a pretty good move because you just get two basic actions for free, essentially. Although he does have to discard one of his cards for no benefit, so... And my opening is going to be to focus one and immediately black box Neo to get one Sakura token on it. This is one half of the transformation complete. Now normally to get it to resurge I would have to burn two artificial Sakura tokens, but uh, I already have a plan for that on this pass to the deck. Yagneto discards two cards to focus and move up. Passes. This is a pretty simple turn, I just needed to figure out what I wanted to discard. So, focus two, then we play the revitalize, there's nothing to charge it, so it disenchants immediately, which resurges my black box Neo. 
I decided to discard the Caltraps to give... Well, because I am not going to be able to play this attack anytime soon. And then I reveal Black Box Neo again, pay the one flare, and take the first transformation, which is going to be Canari. That lets me uh, discard his hand, and honestly that effect is probably not going to get any better than it is right now. And it also lets me maintain an annoying pressure with the uh, attack every time he reshuffles. And this means he's probably not able to Dark Pulse me uh, this pass through the deck, because I believe that was one of the cards that was discarded. Okay, Neo spends a Vigor to advance, then discards a card to focus. I remember to resurge my Black Box Neo a little late. So this turn is a little awkward, mostly because I'm debating whether I want to go to range 6 or range 4. I'm also debating whether I want to try to do a range 5 Asuriform shot. If I go Asuriform here though, if I do quick change to adapt Asuriform, then it won't be in my deck when I reshuffle next turn, which is just kind of sad. I'm also not getting the machine token back and I have no way to burn the machine token really effectively here. I could do it with a turbo switch, but that's just wasteful. And if I go to range 4, I do have some concern of my opponent dropping the Kumasuke with his entire deck in the discard pile. I decided to discard Induce because I don't think it's going to be particularly useful on the coming turns. And I do want to get to range 4 because of the steel strings that are in my discard pile. Ultimately, I decide to discard Quick Change so that I can threaten Rush of Blades on the next turn, assuming that I hit with my trap on Reshuffle. I black box at the end to begin transforming again. Gagnito plays Steel Strings from his discard pile as a trap, which I take to Aura. I am insisting on my Kinari form attack because I am in danger of forgetting it, because I am a forgetful player. Gagnito insists on doing the plays in order, then proceeds to gain a vigor after reshuffling. And then plays Curse of Ashes for only two aura. This leaves me in an awkward position where I have zero aura. I steal strings him from my discard as a trap, and then proceed to gain my vigor late. He responds with Shadow Wall and takes one life damage, which is a uh, well played by him. Having the Shadow Wall, it makes it kind of the obvious choice, but this also means that my Rush of Blades does not trigger because I have not dealt any aura damage this turn. Even though this is a dangerous position to be in with zero aura, I do decide to Rush of Blades here because the 3 2 just cleanly bypasses his aura and hits for a decent amount of life still. And I, even though I have to discard, one of the discards is a, a trap, so that doesn't hurt too much. I can discards for a recover, and then play Steel Strings from hand, which I turbo switch to dodge to range 5. He then plays Shurikens, which I take to life. Oh, yeah, he belatedly takes a bigger action after passing the turn to me, but that's okay, he takes a recover. I remember to remove my Artificial Sacra from distance, late. I have a potential play here that I quickly pick up on where I can Steel Strings his aura down to 2 and then follow up with an Asura form for a 3-2, but my opponent is sitting on 7 Flare. Ultimately I decide to play peacefully and advance 2 to avoid my opponent's cards and let my Black Box Neo quietly resurge. Because if I were to transform this turn, it stops the black box from resurging because I regain an artificial Sakura token. And then I dump my trap into the discard pile. Black box Neo resurges and turns past. Cagnito spends one vigor to recover and passes. I decide I'm going to reshuffle my deck this turn, but I remember to regain my vigor first. I then play Caltraps from my discard pile. And manage to take Gagnito's Dark Pulse from him. 
now that I actually want to quick change this turn, I will try to go for the Asura play. Uh, Caltraps comes out, aiming for Aura. He can't respond to it, so he takes it to Aura. I then play quick change, and choose to take the Asura form. This puts me in range to transform again this turn. And I'm definitely eyeing the Naga form at this point to siphon 5 flare off of Gagneto. But I also want to try and get my attack in first, so I play the Asura's basic action, which plays a 3-2 attack that flinches me after. And Gagneto responds by playing Utsuru's Lies card, or Falsehood card, which reduces the range of my attack by one close, so Asura forms a basic attack now becomes a range 5 only attack, and misses. Because it misses, and because uh, Utsuru's special also gets rid of after attack effects, I do not become flinched, so there isn't a slight upside here. But he now has gotten rid of three of the five flare that I was going to siphon. So that gives me something to think about for my transform effect. I discard induced to move up to range two so that Kanari will attack him on his reshuffle next turn. Developing Diva early isn't half bad, but I decide to go Naga anyway because I felt like paying a little bit of flare and getting two flare off of my opponent is still maybe not relatively strong, but it's okay. And then being able to have the basic action for future turns just also benefits it. On his reshuffle, he reveals Ninpo Walk, which changes the distance to 3, so my Canari attack does not connect. Agneto then spends 2 Vigor to recover 2. Discards a card to recover another 1. It's good to have Rush of Blades in hand, but it's certainly not a card I can play this turn. Check my discard for which traps I have. Unfortunately, Steel Strings is on the bottom of my deck, I realize. I pretty quickly realize here that I can take advantage of his Falsehood special to reduce the charge on my Revitalize and make it disenchant faster, because it will disenchant after Falsehood is not in play. I move up to make it difficult for him to attack me. and then Black Box Neo to half-complete my transformation again. I need to discards to Master Step. I remember to take down my enhancement, belatedly. And then Shurikens from range 3, which I take to Aura, because I don't want my enhancement to lose its unguarded state. He follows up with Steel Strings, which I again take to Aura. And then he passes. It's kind of a rough decision for me on whether I want to reshuffle here or draw my steel strings to help maintain aggression. Ultimately, I decide to go to zero aura and take my steel strings. And then immediately discard my steel strings to move forward. <laughs> Getting to two aura is fine, since it blocks the attack that I am most concerned about, which is already in Gagnino's discard pile in the first place. On his turn, my, uh, Revitalize Disenchant, so Black Box Neo resurges. Gagneto playing Curse of Ashes, then passing to me. I decided to play no traps this turn. The only trap I had available that would have potentially done anything was Induce, and I did not particularly want to Induce to shrink his aura and give him Flare, or to make him move closer and give him aura. Now, because he has Curse of Ashes out, I spare some thought for playing the uh, Revitalize simply to pull up Shadow and make the Ashen aspect of Curse of Ashes not apply. But then I decide that I can also just recover a whole lot and have that take care of it. In fact, I recover and then I think of using D.Va to recover further. One thing I overlook on this turn, though, is that when I transform D.Va, it uh, actually offsets Shadow. So even though I'm recovering two, I put one flare into Shadow and the, the token that was on Black Box Neo goes to Shadow. So the transformation doesn't actually change the shadow level. I also figure that revitalizing the discard pile isn't bad, because I can play it as a trap later if I have no 
other options. With my last reshuffle being a dud for traps, I felt like that would let me get some more value potentially. So I opt for the Diva transformation, as you'll see here, and it's a bit of a misplay. I really, for whatever reason, wasn't really considering Shadow enough this turn. Normally when I'm playing against or as Utsur, I take pains to uh, try and organize the Shadow a bit more so that I know where we're at. So that ticks down, and then we have 13 Shadow after the tick. Uh, I end up losing some of the value because I overstuffed my aura. Um, Yagnito has to Ninpo walk to avoid Kanari's attack again. He's getting really good value out of his Ninpo walk, but he also can't use it aggressively to get into his attack ranges. Curse of Ashes immediately after Curse of Ashes on the reshuffle. He's going to have to discard a card here for the throughout because he had too many cards in his hand. So now I am more savvy about the level of shadow. I'm actually paying close attention to it after being burned by Curse of Ashes once, giving strong consideration how to deny that effect on Gagnita's next turn. I also entertain the lethal possibility here because Gagnita is only at 4 life and I could potentially Omni Blaster him for 3 this turn off of a uh, Esura basic action opener. I'm not exactly sure what I was considering anymore when I wanted to see his card. There was some interaction that I was curious about there, though I can't remember anymore. It's also around this point in the game when I realize we're dangerously close to the high teens 20 shadow for the extinction special to come into play. So I decided to discard Steel Strings for recovery and for the Rush of Blades dream, and then discard Rush of Blades. I opt for recover here instead of move forward because I want to reduce shadow more than I want to get out of his attack ranges. I opt for a quick change here, again, just to reduce shadow. The only form I have available is Asura, so I bring that out, but I do not opt to attack with Asura because then his three aura would go into shadow and trigger Curse of Ashes. Instead, I decide to go Naga form, which will make me gain one vigor when his Curse of Ashes disenchants next turn off of Diva form, because his play pile will become even, and also have the okay effect of hitting the sneak attack, although it's a minus three, minus three at this point already. So there's the Diva form where I gain one vigor because of his play pile becoming even. And he you know, discards to move backwards, which is something that immediately strikes me as odd. And then, of course, it's because Dark Pulse is finally coming. I think about just taking it to Aura because the difference is between him gaining one Aura and me losing one Aura. But going to range 3 is slightly better for me and slightly worse for him. He then uh, hits with Shuriken which I take to life because I'm wary of creating shadow at this point. At this point I realize that I can't really stop him from getting to the 24 that he needs, and I try to assert farm him to strip his aura down, and he decides to take it to life with shadow wall. Then I remember to become flinched. I realize after that that his plate pile became even and that I should gain a vigor. I should have gained the vigor before I became flinched, so that I go back to two and become flinched. Uh, I spent a while thinking about this turn. I don't know what happened. Probably shouldn't joke about dementia, but I feel like it's a little real here watching myself. I just feel so bad about what I'm doing. So I move up and play Caltraps which he takes to Aura, which helps his cause, in theory. And then I think I'm considering backing up and playing the Asura form attack a second time this turn by discarding my Turbo Switch. I think I completely forgot that I played the Asura form attack already this turn. Even though I'm sitting with a flinch on my Vigor, I decide maybe I should keep my turbo switch and so I don't die next turn. And boy, uh, I am glad that I that I did not assert a form twice, even though it was only only because of a bit of caution and not because I remembered that I couldn't. I check his discard his played pile briefly to see what kind of traps I have to worry about, and surprise, Steel Strings is not in there. And then I pass the turn at range 2. Cagnito Nimpo walks to range 3 and then plays Steel Strings on me. This is probably the biggest misplay I make in this game. I 
completely overlook the fact that I could have turbo switched back to range 2 and then hit him with the Canari while dodging his attack. Ultimately, I just didn't want to part with my card, and that ends up kind of burning me. So here he plays the Shuriken, and while I'm considering the damage, that if he has the Life to Shadow special, if I take this to life, I am very dead. And if I take it to Aura, I'm probably just enabling him to play that special with ease. So I decide, okay, I have to turbo switch here. Gagnito then spends two vigor to build up his flare, which puts him exactly where he needs to be to play his three life to shadow card. So even though I tried to avoid it, he still managed to get there. But it cost him a lot more this way. He then discards one card to perform a recover. It's now my turn. I have no cards left, one vigor, and one life. I have some considerations here. First of all, traps happen before the damage for reshuffling, so I can, in theory, do a reshuffle and try and hit him with steel strings. I do check my cards here, and steel strings would, on face value, have killed him, but my thought here was I can't kill him, he has the final pedal. Even though I took the time to look at the card earlier, I just didn't realize, or hadn't clicked in my head, that he was going to zero flare to play that last one. So my thought here is simply, okay, my only chance at winning is to trigger the final pedal here, and then hit him with a trap next turn before I take the reshuffle damage. But, as it happens, he does not have the flare to play the final pedal, and I have the flare with one focus action and Omnis Blaster to hit with a 3-3 for lethal. Now, I did not think that I was winning with that play, and it managed to play around the one card he was holding, which was Shadow Wall. It's important to note here that we learned after the game in Discord through asking Manglu and others that uh, if he had focused one, with that last card and put his aura that he'd recovered into flare, he would be at three flare after taking the two life damage and he would have been able to final pedal. And then I would have had to try and win the game with my trap, which if he played correctly on his next turn would never happen. All he would have to do is recover twice or move forward once or draw an attack card that kills me. So. Uh, that's everything. It was a very tight game that I happened to win.